Today's video is brought to you by Wood Defender. Never think it's too late to stain your fence. So you can see the picture, obviously. Maybe you already have some thoughts. How we built this picket fence with a heavy duty cattle gate. If you want to do a quality job and you're doing a fence that's poured in a driveway, you use metal posts. Always. Or bolt one to the concrete. So we poured these about a foot and okay. a half in the ground. We got four inches of concrete on top. Here, we have a three inch by three inch quarter inch steel post. Two and a half feet in the ground. I agree. Metal steel posts. Post. Steel posts. Yeah. 100%. You got that. Nailed that. Yep. But I'm already starting to see some things that maybe I don't agree with. So we poured these about a foot and a half in the ground. Okay. Yeah. A foot and a half in the ground. Mm, six foot privacy fence. That's pretty shallow. Very shallow. If he has concrete on top of it, I don't see any concrete on the rest of the posts. There is some where it has like a concrete driveway on top of it, and that gives you a little additional stability, but the line posts, that's that's probably a recipe for disaster. And then a three by three post, two and a half feet deep on this size of gate, I would strongly recommend sizing that up a little bit. Definitely go to at least a four by four and a minimum of three feet deep. And then obviously a good 12 inch diameter hole minimum. So another thing I'm seeing here, the distance between the top of the pickets to the top of these two by fours. Don't want that big long distance because it leads to more warping with your picket tops over time. Another thing I can see currently in this picture is their J hinges, their J bolts are all spun up. So this gate in theory could uh, be lifted right off the hinges. Maybe I'm not as worried about it getting lifted off the hinges given the weight of this gate and it probably needs all the support. Uh, I'm more worried about the hinges themselves period. The style of hinge for this heavy of a gate is not at all great. That's kind of what I was thinking too. The hinges that are on the pipe, what are they known for? They're known for slipping. That's all they yes. do. They just slip. And they also look very close together, probably within two and a half feet. So we want to spread our hinges out as far as we can, preferably, and that's just to distribute the load and give it less leverage. That's just adding extra stress. Well, let's watch a little bit more. We have a three inch by three inch quarter inch steel post, two and a half feet in the ground. We do regular vinyl fence posts, 30 inches in the ground, and that's just without a gate hanging off of it. Granted, he does in this picture have the driveway concrete sitting on top of it, so that gives you a little bit of extra strength, but for settling and all the other things, that would be a minimum of 42 inches. What about you? Yeah, definitely at least three. And then I don't know what size hole he dug, but typically what we see is people will dig a hole just very ever so slightly bigger than the post, leaving you not very much concrete, especially at the corners, because the diagonal of the square post is actually quite a bit larger than the face of the post. So on a three and a half by three and a half post, your diagonal is probably close to four and a half. And if you dig an eight inch hole at the corners of the post, you only have maybe an inch and a half of concrete or something. So the weight of the gate is actually potentially going to break. Break out at the corners is what exactly. you'll probably see. Just not enough cover. So ASTM standard on something like this is a hole three times the diameter or the largest face of the post so in a case like this uh, that would call for probably right around 16 inch he said three and a half inch right yeah 14 it would be about 14 inches so and definitely a depth that would be far exceeding three feet you're probably going to be looking at close to four feet on something this size of gate this thing holds all the weight of this heavy gate the cable is to guarantee no extra sagging in the future we drilled directly through the steel and put these heavy duty hinges on it Use a metal drill bit and some elbow grease. Then put the pickets on with self-tappers into the cattle gate. These are self-tappers, they sink into metal. Hey, but that is exactly how we do it. We use self-tapping screws to go from wood to steel. And there's another option. Here's another way to do that, is you could actually fasten the rails with self-tappers and then nail your pickets just like you would the normal cedar to the wood rail. So that's another option if you don't wanna to have to use self-tappers, all those self-tappers on every single picket. Okay, that gate definitely looks that's like it's gate. easily 16 feet. That's a huge gate. That's huge. That's that's a huge gate. We've actually seen that truss system. That can be a good idea. If you've got a really big heavy gate and you've got really solid gate posts, that can be something that's done. However, the way that they've gone about it, if it's under a tremendous amount of stress, it's not gonna last very long, I wouldn't think. It's just got a bolt right through the square tubing. Incidentally, we know what that tubing is because a heavy duty gate like this is 16 gauge, which is the lightest chain link tubing that we would use to build a residential gate. Yes. We wouldn't even use that on a commercial application. So that is the lightest tubing that we offer at SWI, not the heaviest. It looks like a two inch frame, which is in farm gates, there's four different types of gates. You can get them built out of inch and five eighths, inch and seven eighths, and then they offer typically two different gauges. 18 and 16 are the most common gauges and 16 being the heaviest. So this does look like a 16 gauge, two inch frame. Heaviest cattle gate you can get, but they're really not designed for this. So what would you do? 
Hey guys, we hope you guys are enjoying today's video. We wanted to drop in and tell you a thing or two about today's sponsor, Wood Defender. We love these guys, they have a great product. Wood Defender is oil based, so therefore you're not gonna have any chipping, cracking, or flaking of your fence stain. Wood Defender is self-leveling. If you cover your fence to the point of saturation, you're not gonna be able to see a heavier spot and a lighter spot. Also, if you start and stop, you're not gonna see any stitch lines. You are gonna have some drips, you're gonna have some runs, but you're not gonna see them because it's self-leveling. I don't wanna go out there with a paintbrush and stain my fence. No, no, you're thinking the wrong thing. Wood Defender is so easy to apply. Pick up a simple weed sprayer and away you go, spraying down your fence. Now what about overspray? Is that difficult to clean off? Wood Defender is super easy to clean up off of non-porous surfaces. Just take a dry rag, maybe some dish soap and water, and wipe it right off. On porous surfaces, it takes just a little extra prep work with either a drop cloth, some dish soap, and some water. Wood Defender has been family owned since 1952, and they have amazing customer service to match. Wood Defender has dealers in every state who can ship anywhere just like us. Make sure and see the link below. And now back to the video. Currently today we have welders in our shop so we're able to custom fabricate all of our gates. We use square tubing. In a case like this, one of the first recommendations I'd do, I'd split it up into two opening or two gates. Is this a double gate or mm, single? No, they have a walk it's gate. It looks like just off to the side on the other side of this. Okay. But this is one continuous long gate. Yeah, do a double gate whenever possible on big gates. And then you get more of the wah effect like when it opens like wah. wah. <laughs> Um, that's a lot of wind load too, so that's something people forget about is how much wind this thing's gonna hit. Even a light breeze can enact a lot of force on this particular gate. Uh, definitely, and it's just your standard log gate latch. All that force is going on that one little peg. I, I was really happy to see the latch. That's a better latch than what a lot of gates have. It's still a 16 foot privacy it's, it's, swing gate. It though. is, it is. And that I think latch is not really... So number one, I'd build our own frames. I'd split it up into a double gate instead of a single gate if I possibly could. I would build the frame taller so that we can get that top reveal and the bottom reveal to under six inches a piece. I don't really want to see a reveal over six inches above the top two by four or below the bottom two by four. We, we see this truss system that they've built and there's a way to do that on the gate itself so that you don't have to have that taller post. And you can do truss systems just like we do on chain link gates where it runs diagonally from the top of the hinge post down to the bottom of the latch post. That's a little more hidden. The thing to remember there is, is keep that angle under 45 degrees, right? Yep. So if you go over 45 degrees, do two of them. Go from the top to the middle and then from the top of the middle to the bottom of the latch side and do a double truss rod and that gives you some adjustability. Let's say you want to do a, a gate opening like this with a single gate. And then, uh, like we said, I think the other big takeaway is definitely more concrete, deeper. I, I don't know what size hole he did, I just know what people typically do. Always make sure you're using plenty of concrete. I know we get cursed out for using too much concrete. Well, sometimes we get cursed out for using too much concrete and then they get cursed out for not using any. So I don't know, I don't know what makes people happy, but. I, th I think people just wanna see you stick to like, Two bags, maybe one and a Two half bags. bags. One bag. That people. seems to be a pretty common one bag. My my favorite is when people tell me how much the concrete weighs around their posts. Like uh, there's there's 160 pounds of concrete around that post. That's not going anywhere. 160 pounds. You know, after they set that post, they're sitting there going, "That ain't ever going, ever going nowhere." <laughs> and then the gate proceeds to pull the fence post over. <laughs> So definitely deeper on your post, use a bigger post. If you don't want to use the structural steel post, you can also use round chain link pipe. SS40 pipe would probably be adequate for some mm -hmm. of this. A gate this size, if I was going to do a gate this big, I'd probably even go six and five eighths. I'd be curious to see this gate today. They're in Northern California. I've talked to these people, really nice people. And I think they're trying hard. But one of the things that we, as professionals, we fight a lot is that people put content out like this without maybe the necessary qualifications. And so you get a bunch of other people that want to follow the same design and have disastrous results. So we do have experience with these type of gates, but really great people, honestly. It's a husband and wife. They're trying like heck and he's trying to build this business. So mad respect for that. Hats off, hats off to you. So DIY coach, now you know, if you happen upon this, what we'd recommend if you do another gate like this and you follow some of the advice we've gotten, I'd love to see it. So make sure and tag us in TikTok. I think you know who I am. That's how we would build the same gate and make some improvements to make it last a little bit better, perhaps. I'm Mark with SWI. I'm Dan with SWI. I'm Alan with SWI Wyoming. And you have a good dang day.